I'm really excited and frankly a little nervous to introduce to you the class project which I've prepared for everyone who's working through this series of videos trying to learn distributed systems. We're going to work on and build a multi-user chat application. Which is kind of weird because like we're trying to build a class project in a class with no teaching staff and so I want you to be able to build something you can play with yourselves. I want you to be able to share what you're doing with the rest of the class. So by building a chat application, you'll be able to chat with any classmates who have happened to have who are also concurrently going through this series of videos. Also the end product I want it to be fun or maybe even useful if you want to use this chat application for your own website or for having conversations with your friends. So let's dive into it and take a look at what it is we're building. So we go to distributedchat.appspot.com. This is an App Engine application I've created, and the first thing that happens when you go there is Google asks, is it okay to share your logged in email address with this application? All it's going to tell it is who you are. It's not going to reveal any of your email or docs or any other personal information. So let's click Allow. The application then loads, and once it loads, it then queries the server and retrieves the most recent messages that have been sent and displays them on the screen. So now we've got a multi-user interactive chat. We could use this for organizing where we're going for lunch if you and your friends were using it at the same time. Or we could use this for asking questions about building distributed systems. And hopefully your classmates and or I will try and help answer your questions. So let's just write a test message to see how this works. So we'll send on topic test and I'll say something random like I am someone who likes bananas. And if I send that message, everyone else who's using the server at this point in time can see the message that I just sent. I am someone who likes bananas. It also has saved this in the App Engine data store, which means that this message is saved forever. And it's available for searching. So if anyone else in the future wants to learn about bananas, they can just type bananas into the search box and up come all the messages that people have sent about bananas. So now that you've seen how it works, I want you to go and play with it a little bit to learn how it works through your own experience. Go to distributedchat.appspot.com and give it a try. Welcome back. Now that you've come back to watch the video again, let's go on and explain how this application works. It's a little bit more complicated than it looks, but let's start with the basic outline. We're relying on Google's App Engine infrastructure, and Google's App Engine infrastructure does a lot of the heavy lifting on our behalf. The pieces that I had to create, are, there really are two pieces. One is, there's an application that runs in the user's browser. It's got some HTML that renders the page, and it's that, then it has some JavaScript that periodically queries the App Engine infrastructure and asks, are there any more messages? And if so, it retrieves them, and it rewrites the HTML to include those new messages. That part's fairly simple. A little bit more complicated is the Python application which I have to write, which does all of the server-side logic, and it's run by Google's App Engine infrastructure. It does things like when a user requests a page, it serves the web page to them, and when a user requests to either send or receive chat messages, it distributes those messages to the user. The messages themselves are stored in the data store database that's part of App Engine. Okay, so that's how the application works, but what other pieces are there that are provided for you? Well, first off, the data store database is a highly reliable store for our messages. It's replicated across many hard drives and many machines, and it has fault tolerance, and it has failover, and all those good things. Our code is actually executed in a way which it's scalable and fault tolerant as well. The App Engine infrastructure runs multiple copies across multiple machines, it spins up more copies if the load on the server demands it, and it turns them down as the load goes away. The infrastructure also provides a channel termination mechanism that allows each browser to maintain an open connection back to App Engine and receive chat messages as they come in. This is something which standard HTTP doesn't give you a necessarily an easy way of doing in a standard configuration. 
On top of that, we're relying on all sorts of other infrastructure. We're relying on the user authentication infrastructure that Google provides. We're relying upon a search engine that Google provides to allow us to search through our message data. And we're relying on the billing system. App Engine charges us if we use more than our free quota on the system, and in order to do that charging, it needs to keep track of how many requests and how much bandwidth we're consuming. So, I've shown you in a finished application. We're done, right? I've shown you an App Engine application, which means that Google has done a lot of work for us to build the App Engine infrastructure. And it actually gives us a lot of advantages. Our scaling story is pretty much done, although we haven't done any load testing, so we don't know how well our particular application scales on App Engine. Authentication is handled for us. It gives us reliable storage. It gives us this multicast through the channel mechanism that allows us to send messages to all of the browsers that are currently using our application. We get to take advantage of Google's site reliability engineers who keep the App Engine infrastructure up and running, and hopefully that keeps our application up and running all the time as well. And we get to write some fairly simple code and rely upon some libraries that are provided for us to make the whole thing work really well. There are some disadvantages to it. App Engine costs money if we use more than our free quota. You can only log into our system using the Google login mechanism because, well, that's the easiest one to implement. I'm sure you could find a way of implementing other login mechanisms if you actually cared. Uh, the channel mechanism we're relying on got deprecated shortly after I wrote the app. Just goes to show if you're relying on someone else's infrastructure, you should really understand how well supported that infrastructure is now and will be in the future. We have to do some code rewriting to use a different API that they provide instead. We don't have any load testing written, so we got to do that on our own. And we also should probably, if we want to build a really reliable service, have some application level monitoring on top of the App Engine SRE provided monitoring that makes sure App Engine is running to make sure our application is still performing correctly at all times. Um, but the most important challenge with this version of the chat application is it's fairly opaque. The App Engine infrastructure is doing a lot of the distributed systems work for us, and as a result, we can't really see what's going on, and we can't thoroughly understand it, which is against the purpose of this class. You want to really understand how the whole system works, and the only way to really understand it is get your hands dirty and build it yourselves. So because of this, I went and I wrote a second version of the distributed systems chat application. Let's take a look at it now. It runs as a UWSKI application on your own server. An example I have running, we can find on www.distributedsystemscourse.dschat. When we load this, we notice that it's very similar to the version we looked at before, with a couple of minor differences. One is it doesn't do authentication using Google Authentication, and instead, it lets anyone access this web page and send messages as anyone they want. So I can send as the user monkey, for example. Also, when you're sending messages, they don't get indexed for future search. Instead, you could just scroll through all the messages that have been sent. I like bananas, send a message, and there you go, the message is sent. Just like the App Engine version, I've got a UWSKI version of the Distributed Systems chat application running as well for you to play with. Go to www.distributedsystemscourse.com slash dschat and try it now. When you're done, come back and watch the rest of the video. Welcome back. Let's talk about how the UWSKI version of our chat application works. Now, in order to explain it, I'm going to go through one request at a time and explain how the various components of our server respond and deal with those requests. So, the first thing that happens when a user goes to our chat application's web page is it fetches the web page from the web server. I happen to be running an Nginx web server on a virtual machine in the cloud. You can run it anywhere you want. So when the user's browser goes to fetch it, the Nginx web server just responds with the HTML, JavaScript, and fab icon of the web page that we're trying to execute. The browser then starts executing the JavaScript. And in the JavaScript, the first thing I have the application do is I have it open a persistent connection back to the web server using the WebSocket protocol. When Nginx gets a WebSocket request, it doesn't deal with it directly. Instead, it passes it through to another process on the same machine called UWSKI, and it communicates with UWSKI through a local Unix socket. UWSKI, when it gets the WebSocket request, needs to launch some code to actually deal with it, and so it launches 
Python code that I wrote inside a Python environment and it says, here you go, have a WebSocket request. My code upon receiving a WebSocket request is now running in a thread and it says, well, there's nothing I can do with this yet. I have to wait until something interesting happens. And so the Python code that's running inside you whiskey then has to suspend itself and wait for something interesting. It turns out the suspension is not something that uWSGI does normally unless you configure it specially. And I'm using the uGreen thread suspension mechanism to allow it to do this. And so my code is now then sitting there suspended saying I've got an open WebSocket connection. Let's wait for something interesting. So let's talk about something interesting. Once the application in the browser has established a WebSocket connection, it wants to populate the UI with messages that have been sent recently in the chat application. So it sends a request over the WebSocket back to the server saying, please give me some messages. This gets passed through Nginx through to uWSGI, which then passes it through to the appropriate thread. And then that thread wakes up and it says, I need to get some messages. So it fetches some messages from the database. And in this case, we're using the Redis in-memory database in order to store all of our messages. So it retrieves some messages and sends them back through the WebSocket. Now, the last request that the user can send back to the server is to send a message. When we send a message, it's sent just via a regular HTTP POST request back to the server, which then passes it through to uWSGI. uWSGI then forks a thread as required in order to execute this request. And in the Python code, what it does is it does two things. One is it stores a copy of the message in the Redis in memory database. And then the second thing it does is it uses the Redis pub sub mechanism to wake up all of the sleeping WebSocket threads and tell them, hey, you've got a message. Please send this back to your respective clients. And so the Redis pub sub mechanism just acts as sort of like an in memory echo server. It's set gets a message and it immediately echoes it back to all the other threads which are waiting for a message. And that is how our uWSGI chat system works. So yeah, this is a little bit more complicated than what we had to deal with before. But on the other hand, we can now look at all the parts and watch what's happening, attach debuggers to them and tweak them and change them as we please. Because it's more complicated, there's more to do and there's more to learn about and there are more ways we can improve this system. Let's first talk about what are the advantages of over App Engine of us using the uWSGI version of this application. Well, one is it's a fixed cost. If we have a machine, our application will run on that machine and however much we pay for that machine is a fixed cost. If that machine consumes a lot of bandwidth at our ISP, we might have to pay a variable rate based on the bandwidth cost, but I'm going to wave my hands and ignore that for now. The second advantage is we've now built a very simple system. And so it's easier to understand what's going on, easier to debug, easier to figure it out. And the third advantage is we have full control over the entire system, which is both a plus and a minus. It's a plus, we get to control it. It's a minus because if anything goes wrong, we've got to fix it. It's our fault. So what are we missing or what are the disadvantages? One, we haven't built any authentication mechanism in yet. So we might want to work on that. Second, there's no redundancy. All of this runs on a single machine, which means if that machine goes down, well, our system is gone. Third, we're using an in-memory database, the Redis in-memory database to store this. It doesn't store its data on disk the way I've configured it initially. Um, and it also doesn't replicate it across more than one machine. So we don't have any reliability or redundancy or durability of our data. Another problem, this currently only scales to one machine. If we expect enough users in our chat system that it will overwhelm a single server, we might want to have some way of dividing our workload over more than one server. Now, I'm currently running this on the smallest server you can get from Google's Compute Engine service. So one way of scaling it is we could just spend more money and buy faster, bigger machines. That only scales up to the limit of what they're willing to sell us. Another problem with what we have right now is it's manually deployed. It would probably be nice to put all of this into a Docker container or use some mechanism like that to make it really easy to deploy more, more versions of this server. And then the last problem we have is we're burning an entire thread for every connection from every browser. This might become a scalability limitation if our chat service becomes too popular. The whole purpose of this is to give you something to work on. So what are some project ideas of what you can do? 
the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your own version of the chat server. So go ahead and download the code, and I'll give you the link to that in a second, and set up your own instance. Put it on your machine at home, or get a virtual machine in the cloud and set it up there, and see if you can get the thing working, and poke at it a little bit, and see what happens as you change it. Maybe add some pet features that you like to the chat system. The next thing you might want to work on is writing load tests. You don't know if what you've changed or what you've built really works unless you test it. And you actually don't really understand how you might want to improve the performance of the system unless you understand where its performance bottlenecks are. So load tests would be a really valuable thing to create. I want to give one caveat. If you do write load tests, please don't point them at my instances of the servers because I don't want to get a huge app engine bill or have my server go down under your de denial of service attack. Next thing you should do is maybe you should consider designing and building your own replicated message store to either replace Redis or augment Redis. Redis actually has some mechanisms, if you turn them on, that allow you to replicate across multiple machines. It also allows you to write some of the data to disk. And so try playing with those systems or build your own and see if you can come up with something that is both more reliable and more durable. Speaking of durable, since we're not writing anything to disk right now, you should maybe change it so it does write some data to disk so you can survive a machine reboot. And then another thing you might want to do is add user authentication. I'm really curious how long it'll take before my instance will become spam infested or have people doing abusive things with it. Hopefully it'll never happen, but I don't have such faith in humanity. We'll see. And last, now that I've given you a bunch of stuff to play with, go and play with it. Use the source. I've Here's a link to the source on GitHub. Go to github.com slash colahan slash dschat, and you can get both the App Engine and the UWSGI version of this application there. And here are the URLs to the live version of the apps, so you can go and play with them. Have fun!